Hey, everybody, before we start the Season 2 recap, if you need a Season 1 recap, there's a little thing at the top there. Click that. You'll get the Season 1 recap. But in Season 2, it picks up right after Season 1 left off, with Yusef turning to Hassan and saying, Lupin? But he doesn't introduce himself as a cop. Honestly, he doesn't really have time. Claire runs up and says, yes, our son is missing. He's dressed up as Lupin. And Yusef informs them that he saw somebody take some kid and put him into a gray car and take off. So both Hassan, Claire, and Yusef run to the parking lot, looking to see if they can get eyes on the car, but it's long gone. And Claire loses it on Hassan, yelling at him, this is all your fault. Hassan goes and hot wires a car, and the whole time he's telling Claire, don't call the police. But she tells him, if you leave, I'm going to call the police. And he assures her, I can take care of this, don't call the police. And he gets in the car. When he does, though, Yusef also gets in the car. And Hassan kind of looks at him like, what are you doing? And Yusef tells him, I'm here to help. So Hassan doesn't really put up a fight, and the two men head off. But Claire did as she said. She calls the police. Although when the two detectives arrive, they're not much help. They tell her, eh, we'll file a report. Then that report after 24 hours will go to another report. And Claire gets so upset and says, all right, you're useless. I'm heading off and I'll find my son myself. While Claire was talking to the police, Asan and Yusef are trying to play catch up. They realize that there's only one road that that car could have gone down. And luckily for them, Leonard had to pull over because he realized he was heading into town and it's not the best look to have a child in the back tied up. So he pulled the car over and put Raul in the trunk. He tries to get a hold of Pellegrini, but he can't because there's no reception, which is also an issue for Yusef. He's trying to get a hold of Sophia, but he can't. And he tells Hassan that once they do get service, he has to get in touch with his, quote, wife, or else she's going to be pissed because she can't get a hold of him. Because of the fact there's no service, this forces Leonard to pull over in that town. And he walks into a bar where immediately everything stops. Everybody's staring at him because he's the only black guy in the bar. When he has to use the phone, the guy says, for customers only. So Leonard buys something and is able to use the phone and call Pellegrini and tell him that he followed Hassan, but there was a small setback and he's got his kid now. Pellegrini informs him that he doesn't care about the son. He cares about the father. So clean up the mess. Do it quickly. Leonard hangs up the phone, walks back to the car. But as he's sitting there ready to take off, he notices that a car came in hot. And that's because Hassan and Yusef have shown up. Yusef actually walks into the bar that Leonard just left. And because Yusef isn't black, he gets to use the phone without being a customer. He calls up Sophia and informs her that he is with Hassan. She's pretty taken aback at how far he's taken this because, remember, he was supposed to be sick that day. But then he has to speed up the phone call because he sees that Hassan is about to walk back in after getting no answers from anybody on the street if they've seen a car or a boy. So Yusef hurries up the phone but does let Sophia know, I'm going to need backup. And just like with Leonard, as soon as Hassan walks in the bar, everybody stops and stares at him because he's black. And racism is something he's dealt with before. When he was a kid, somebody stole Claire's violin right before a recital. And when she went to go get a new one, the guy told her how much it would cost and it was way too much money. And Hassan noticed that they had a sign up for rentals. But the guy told him that he wasn't willing to rent to him. And it was obviously because he was black. So Hassan did what Hassan does. He joined up with Ben and decided he's going to steal one. He waited for the guy to leave and stole the violin. When he gave it to Claire, she was thrilled to see it. I mean, he saved the day. But he lied to Claire and said that he didn't steal it and it was just being borrowed. Later that day, Asan and Ben headed to the recital and they're watching Claire play the violin beautifully. But then all of a sudden, the police show up. And when they do, it stops Claire dead in her tracks. But they don't come for Claire, who is actually holding the violin. They arrest Asan. They do end up taking that violin, but this is a good example that Hassan's line to Claire started way back in the day. It's worth noting, though, if the guy wasn't a racist piece of shit, this never would have happened. Anyway, nobody really answers Hassan when he pleads at the bar. Has anyone seen a mixed racial kid? He's got frizzy hair. And the bartender yells at him, saying, I have customers. To which Hassan grabs him by the back of the neck and says, does it sound like I'm playing? And at that point, somebody does say, yeah, actually, the guy's driving off right there. And Hassan and Yusef see the car speed by. So they get in their car and they chase after it. But as they're trying to play catch up, Sophia texts Yusef, I'm on my way. And you can't really tell whether Hassan sees it or not, but Yusef grabs the phone pretty quickly and says, ah, oh, it's from my wife. They continue to race after the car, but they get to a railroad crossing. And Leonard's car makes it with ease. Hassan, though, has to really floor it, narrowly missing the train. But this gave Leonard enough time to sort of get away. He turned off on a random road and drove up to an abandoned, dilapidated house. I mean, this thing hadn't been touched in years. Leonard breaks in, takes Raul out, and ties him up to a chair. He then grabs the phone and texts Hassan, who is looking for any hint of the car, not finding it. But he texts Hassan pretending to be Raul. He says, hey, Dad, I was able to get away. I'm in this old house. 
And Hassan texts him back saying, let's do like Lupin does with his daughter. But Yusef points out, hey man, it's not his daughter, it's his son. And Hassan tells him that Raul is a diehard Lupin fan. He'll pick up on the mistake. If he doesn't, then that means they're walking into a trap. And sure enough, Leonard tells on himself. So they know that Raul isn't actually the one texting him. But at this point, they've located the house. Instead of sneaking in, though, Hassan stands right in the middle of the field and calls the cell phone and tells Leonard, if you hurt my son, I'm going to kill you. And Leonard stares back at him and says, if you want your son, come get him. So they hang up the phone and Hassan starts walking back to the car and Yusef says, hey man, we should call the police. But Hassan tells him we can't because they're either in that guy's pocket or they're incompetent. Hassan starts fishing through the trunk for anything that can help him and then he gets back in the car and asks Yusef, how long till they show up? And Yusef says, what are you talking about? And Hassan says, the police. They're the ones you called earlier. They're your wife because you're actually a cop. I know all about you. Yusef starts to tell him that he's been tracking him for a while and only he's the one that figured out who he actually was. And he would arrest him if he was armed, but he's not. He then asks how much time and Yusef says an hour, maybe less. And he's pretty accurate because Sophia is on her way. She's about an hour and a half out. Hassan then thanks him and gets out of the car. And when Yusef tries to leave, he can't because Hassan tied him up and tells him, I told you. I don't work with police. By the time Hassan enters the house, though, it's nightfall. And Leonard closed up all the doors, all the windows, so it's pitch black in the house. He's also set up some booby traps to let him know where Hassan might be, like a broken glass, but Hassan is onto it. Hassan starts slowly sneaking through the house with a flashlight, looking for Raul. And Leonard is doing the same thing. He's looking for Hassan, though, with a shotgun that he was able to find in the house. Eventually, though, Hassan also arms himself with a pool cue he found. And when the two men find each other, they start going at it. Hassan trying to wiggle the shotgun away from him because he realized he brought a pool cue to a gunfight. And the two men trade shots back and forth until finally Hassan gets the better of Leonard by literally throwing him out the upstairs window. When Hassan looks down on the ground, it looks like Leonard is dead. But he's not. He's just really pissed off. Hassan starts frantically looking through the house for Raul, but he's not finding him. And that's because while Hassan was talking to Yusef in the car, Leonard was busy transporting Raul from the house back to the trunk of the car. And when Leonard gets up, he decides to go douse that car with gasoline and light it on fire and text Hassan back saying, next time, maybe you should look in the car. And by the time Hassan gets downstairs, he arrives in just enough time to see the car explode. He's crying beside himself because he feels like he just watched his son die. And it's at this moment that Sophia arrives and tells him to get on his knees at gunpoint, which he does. But he's telling her, my son was in there. She doesn't care, though. She thinks it's just a trap, but it's not. And he just continues to cry. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought this sucked. Make sure to be nice in the comment section. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen there, I'll get it up in a few days not to worry. And I have merchandise, you know? So go buy a mug or something. It's never too early to think about Christmas gifts, folks. Once again, thank you for checking out this recap.